that learning organization is like the wrong term because it's a, a way station to being a better performing organization rather than, you know, it's not about learning, it's still about business. The problem that I had with a lot of that stuff, and, uh, and by that stuff, learning organization was just one example. It, uh, there were a lot of others. Was that they lost sight of the purpose of a business and the purpose of management. Yeah. Uh, that you, uh, you had to stay anchored in using products and services to fulfill market needs. And management and organization was about how you do that. Uh, and what had happened was all of these things like learning organizations became so hyper-articulated that they lost their moorings in terms of the ultimate purpose. And they became ends in themselves. And uh, that, to me, spelt a weakness, not a strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the short term, it flourished like crazy, but in the long term, uh, it wasn't going to survive. So yeah. that you, you don't hear about it. it. Unless it's anchored in the fundamental of using products and services to fulfill market needs, it ain't going to survive. Knowledge management is another one. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> uh, knowledge management, you know, it's, it becomes an end in itself and it's hyper-articulated, uh, guaranteed to not go anywhere. I, I was one of uh, a small handful that coined the term and led the drive on corporate culture back in the 80s. Mm. That was another one. So nowadays... Corporate, the phrase corporate culture is part of the business lexicon. Everybody knows the phrase and accepts it uh, as so, so, but they've stopped trying to influence it directly. And the, the reason that, it, uh, that that happened was because it focused predominantly on the organization, on business culture, on, on the corporate culture as an organizational phenomenon instead of focusing on the business culture in the corporation. If it had stayed on the business culture rather than on the organizational culture, it treated culture as, a, as an organizational phenomenon rather than treating it as a business phenomenon. To me, there, there's what you do and how you do it. There's the business and there's the organization. And, and uh, the one is always ahead of the other. The business you can't, you know, you can't have an organization without a business. The organization emerges in order to run the business. As the business grows into a large corporation, the organization takes on so much baggage it starts to fall further and further behind in its ability to be a real-time organization. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, real-time organizations are not. It's not one that gets used, but it would join our list, you know. So, well, how do we create a real-time organization? And you start focusing on real-time organization. What happens is you're focusing on the wrong thing. you got to focus on the business being real-time. The best way to create new organizational stuff is by focusing here, not by focusing here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. That's what I'm... That's what I'm...